Hi, my Calc BC students, Mr. Record here, where we're taking a look at now example 17. We are almost at the end. There's only two more videos left, example 17 and 18, and we'll have this long topic of 9.4 wrapped up. At least we're now in the midst of talking about uh, calculus things with these vector value functions. And as you can see, example 17 is all about finding and determining when a vector value function will be continuous. So let's take a look at our example. So here we are at example 17. The directions say determine the intervals on which the vector value function is continuous. Now, to be honest, there's going to be a lot of similarities between this example and a previous example that we talked about where you were finding the domain. The only difference is, is that we want to focus a little bit more on uh, the ideas that, that make this entire function continuous which at the same time is, is also going to use some of the ideas of domain range. You'll see what we're talking about here in just a moment. So uh, what I would say to do is focus on each individual component. So the one over T is going to be our focus. And we take a look at that and we say, okay, where, where is this guy going to be continuous? Well, it turns out that he is continuous everywhere, right? There's just one little place where that's going to be problematic. So we can say this guy is continuous everywhere, whoop, except zero. And you can write it up. You can think of it a lot of different ways. Negative T is the other component. And we know that that guy is continuous everywhere, right? If you want, you can say negative infinity to infinity if that helps you besides uh, saying everywhere. And now the key is to put the two ideas together. You're talking about an intersection here. So therefore, every single thing is included into this vector values function continuity except that place at zero. So we can just simply say r of t, the vector r of t, is continuous. And I think what I'm going to do is use interval notation. I'll say we are continuous on negative infinity to zero and on zero to infinity. And that would take care of this guy. All right. Same thing for part b. In part B, we're going to deal with the first component, the natural log of quantity t minus 1. Now, if we recall, the natural log has some issues when t minus 1, or when the value that you're taking the log of, is a 0 or a negative number. So we want to make sure that t minus 1 is going to be positive, which basically says that t has to be bigger than 1. Right. Not only is that the domain restriction, but it also acts as where this vector value function is going to be continuous. Next up, we talk about our tangent of t, and this one's a little bit trickier. You might have to think about what the graph of tangent looks like. Every now and then I'll pose this to my students, and it challenges them just a little bit. Because we don't see the graph of tangent too terribly often, especially once we leave pre-calc, it seems like. But its graph looks a little something like this, if you recall. Vertical asymptotes are at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And then we also want to recall the fact that this will continue this behavior. And we will have these vertical asymptotic behavior at various locations of odd pi over 2. So the other one would be over here at negative 3 pi over 2. If I draw one last little cycle in. So there's a variety of ways that you can state this. Um, we don't have to all say the same thing. But we could say continuous um, everywhere except, OK, well, the exception would be pi over 2 times some n or some k. And we just want to make sure that we denote that k is an odd integer. And that probably would do a pretty good job of depicting what's happening. Now we have to put these two ideas together. And really, we've only got to exclude numbers that are less than 1 and equal to 1 along with this everywhere except odd numbered values times pi over 2. So I'd say that what we could do is maybe be a little clever 
and say, well, since the first time that we have a pi over 2 times um, a number that might be um, uh, a k value that will be um, producing a, a result times pi over 2 that's also bigger than 1 is when k is equal to 1 k is equal to 1, you have pi divided by 2, which is essentially a number that's larger than 1 anyway. So I think what we're going to be able to do here is say continuous everywhere except, and then we're going to make that rule here, continuous everywhere except when we have t equal to pi over 2 times k, but I think this time we can just simply say k is a positive integer. We don't have to worry about just saying integer because the, the negative values aren't in the play uh, because we got to rule them out there. Now, are there other ways to convey that? There certainly would be. You just have to make sure that what you would write would be uh, saying the same thing. Uh, I think this one is pretty safe, though. And then lastly, we'll take a look at part C here. Cosine t plus inverse cosine t. So if we take a look at this guy, uh, we say that cosine of t, well, we know a little bit about him, right? He's just got a lot of places where he's continuous, right? Over the entire number line, negative infinity to infinity. But inverse cosine of t, totally different story. We had a little issue with sine inverse of t a few videos ago. Hopefully you remember from that situation that the domain restriction on either inverse sine or inverse cosine um, are always going to produce the negative 1 to positive 1. That's just what the graph is going to look like. Um, basically, you know that uh, the range of cosine is negative 1 to 1. And so once the graph gets rotated around the, um, uh, or uh, uh, reflected, I'm sorry, around the, the line y equal x, the domain and range values switch. And so basically, if you take the intersection of these two particular uh, sets, you're going to see that r of t is continuous for the closed interval negative 1 to 1. Hope this helps. One more video left. The big one about taking derivatives of vector value functions is coming up next. Hope you join us. We'll see ya. Take care.